Hey guys, and welcome to the first ever guest episode of the Glam Design Podcast. I have my first guest with me, Jonathan Briscoe. He is a YouTube and Instagram extraordinaire. So welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You know, I just realized I'm like, this is the first time we've ever actually met in, in person. person. Isn't that's that crazy. wild? That's crazy. Like I, and it's, we're it doing didn't even this. dawn on me like until earlier today. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like, did I maybe see you one time in, in PB, uh, like kind of from a distance? I, I like mean, for some reason, that's like a faint it, memory. It's possible because I yeah. always be out there, but in I PB. don't remember. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember. I yeah. Don't, you know what I'm saying? But Well, first time to my house, what I do you know, think? No, that's great. This, is this it is giving you setup. rich baby it's, daddy vibes? Absolutely. It's a great setup. Mm. Amazing view. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Hard parking to find. <laughs> <laughs> it's great though. You thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, I started my podcast off because I wanted to tell my story through a very vulnerable voice. I wanted to step into my truth, show my scars so yeah. others know that they can heal. Yeah. And I wanted to invite others to the safe space and platform that I created to do the same. Mm -hmm. So Jonathan's going to tell us his uh, first time ever told story. But before we do that... <laughs> I think every story needs to start with yeah. a little bit of background and storytelling. Mm -hmm. And so in the spirit of storytelling, I think we should tell everyone how we first met. Okay. Uh, okay. So I'm going to let you do that. I can't remember. Was it Tinder or was it Bumble? I felt like it was Tinder. It was Tinder, yeah, right? Yeah, I was. And I it was, was like when I first moved here. So mm -hmm. I moved to, it was actually before I moved here mm -hmm. because I moved here in October 2015. Yeah. And I kind of went back and did a little <laughs> background checking. <laughs> So I went back to our messages in September of 2015 on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So we took the conversation from Tinder to Instagram. Uh -huh. And you said, and I quote, <laughs> oh, I see. Well, you're going to marry a rich guy anyway. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. LOL. <laughs> and I said, um, oh. not sure why you say that. LOL. I plan to be rich myself. Don't need to marry rich. <laughs> That's so... Rich baby daddy. Yeah, I, that's crazy. I just, I, it's crazy because I don't even remember that. But I do think like it was so long ago. But yeah, yeah, I definitely and I still believe that. I still believe you that. You still believe yeah, that I'm gonna marry oh, 100%, 100%. Huh. Yeah. You think I'm actually gonna get married? Because you, I've kind of given up hope. Wait, well, you you don't you don't know, you know feel like you're gonna get do you wanna get married? Of course I wanna get married. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I would like love that. I've always yeah. been a hopeless romantic. I feel like you're gonna get married and it's definitely gonna be a, a, a wealthy man you know what i I'm think saying? he definitely has to be able to at least carry his own at mm. the very least the very minimum carry his own right yeah, because yeah. i've done i've done the whole thing where i've tried to fall in love with potential i'm mm. like okay yeah. the package on the outside looks nice <laughs> yeah, like i've cho yeah. i've chosen based mm -hmm. off of that and mm -hmm. i'm always like you know i can maybe work on some of the other things mm -hmm. and help him to realize his full potential, but it always ends up backfiring. Yeah, yeah, no, I I, I, I feel like you, uh, just give it, like, when I, I remember when I first met you, man, like, you, you, you're, you're glam. You're yeah. glam, so, yeah. I mean, anything less would just be like, and you, because you already hold yourself to a high standard, so. So I got to ask you, does that, in, did that intimidate you when we um, first met? Maybe, maybe I, I feel like yeah, like wouldn't be the first that I heard that because I feel like especially if I'm at a certain point in my life where I'm not where I want to be, then a woman who is that that's you know of your stature that's like oh I ain't trying to you know what I'm saying and I think a lot of dudes be thinking like that but um, well let's talk about the guys who actually step up to the challenge mm. so like the ones <laughs> that know that they're not really ready but mm. they want to try to be ready. Right. And so a lot of times, at least in my experience, and, you know, feel free to interject wherever, mm -hmm. but it's like one of two things happens. Either they put their best forward and they try, mm -hmm. and then they end up being emasculated mm -hmm. and kind of compete with me right. when in a relationship, it should be two people aiming for the same goal, right, like right. working on the same team. Mm -hmm. So masculine and feminine energy is that basically coincide to create a really good partnership and mm -hmm. team. Um, and a lot of times that never has the opportunity to happen when mm -hmm. I'm in my masculine and they're in their feminine. Mm -hmm, yeah. So then the other thing that ends up happening is these guys end up cheating. <laughs> exactly. Hey, that, you know what I'm saying? That's what, 
That's what I'm here for today to talk oh, about. Oh, that's that. what you're but, here um, for to talk uh, about. I'm nah, trying but, to alley you up with that. Way. You know nah, yeah. I mean, I mean, a hundred percent. Like for me, it it is a pride thing. Like, like if I'm if I'm with somebody and, and she doing that, I'm like, well, I'm not. You know, so I look at myself like it is gonna be a competition thing. It's gonna c- create like, like some some kind of uh, fight back and stuff mm-hmm. because I am so prideful. Now you got a lot of dudes that's not that prideful that's just gonna be like, oh yeah, well, but not me. Like I, I look at they're myself. They're in their beta. Yeah, they mm-hmm. they in that. Be- well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. But I mean, I'm I'm a very prideful dude. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And uh, I just I'm, I'm I'm very competitive, and sometimes that's that's too toxic. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I'm toxic with my. Uh, it gets competitive with with the women that I'm dating, and, and it, I just I, I I mean I'm not like that no more because I, I I'm confident in who I am now. But yeah, for the most part, you know that can be a, a big issue. But you you uh, yeah yeah you yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. Hold back. Don't hold <laughs> no, back. I mean I mean, tell I mean how it is. yeah, I feel like yeah, like it, it's gonna take a a, a real uh, dude that that has his stuff together, everything together, you know what I'm saying? And, and he he has to be confident in, in who he is for, for, for you. And that's how I feel like that's what you want too. You know, it's funny you that you say saying? that because I actually had a former client who at his meetup, there was a this guy, we'll just yeah. say a gentleman mm-hmm. to, to be nice, yeah. um, who <laughs> consistently tries to shoot his shot, mm-hmm. consistently. Yeah. He is a very good looking guy, but he doesn't have his shit together. Uh And he comes off with having like really masculine kind of Mm. traits and character, or did I say masculine? I meant feminine, Uh feminine like Uh traits and characteristics. Mm. And my client came up to me and he's like, my guy, (laughs) just stop. It's not gonna work. Like she needs somebody who's like super alpha, uh, just quit while you're ahead. And I actually kind of felt bad because you can see like the embarrassment Uh on his face, but I think you hit the nail on the head. Like that's truly, yeah. that truly is what I will need. Yeah. And I feel like masculinity is like a dying trait. Mm-hmm. No, hundred percent. Have you, let me ask you, have, like, do you feel like you can, because I come from like where I come from, it's like love is love. Like I love a, I love a woman who ride the bus. Mm-hmm. You feel me? If I really like, like, yeah. like her like that, do you feel like you could do that with a man? Great question. Yeah. Um, and I thought you were here to like be the one for me to ask questions, but shit, I mean, <laughs> but we're, I, I, I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to. If you would have asked me that question in 2015 when we first met, mm. the answer would have been yes. Mm. And that's because um, I've always looked at love as like love is love. Mm. And it's like, you know, love is enough. Mm. And like I realized later in life that love just is not enough. Right. Like you can love anybody. But when you're thinking about a marriage, when you're thinking about a life partnership, there's so much more that goes into that. You are creating a life with somebody. You are creating, like, it's a, marriage really is kind of like a business deal, if you think about it, because you're marrying yourself together Uh tax-wise. You're assuming that person's debt. Mm -hmm. You are figuring out how you're going to buy a house together, raise children. Like, there's financial responsibilities. And if all of that burden lies on one person, Mm -hmm. then ultimately um, it's going to add strain and stress to the relationship. Mm -hmm. So being able to find somebody who is on your same level and is your partner and your equal, um, it's okay if somebody's down Mm -hmm. temporarily, but then to be able to like come up together and like help each other in that space, Mm -hmm. I think that's where like that true unison happens. So like, that's why I think when you said your comment to me, like back in 2015, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like I answered it the way that I did because mm. one, I admittedly know that I was a little bit too in my masculinity mm. because I was like, I'm going to be the rich guy. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't yeah. need to marry a rich guy. I'm yeah. going to be the rich guy. Um, and I still do operate that way. Like I still prioritize yeah. me being successful, but I do want a partner right. who is also successful, who inspires me to be better. Mm and challenges me and that I can look up to and admire them because mm. I notice that that's what allows me to be more in my femininity. Yeah, right. no, that's that's real good because it has to be that that balance. Um, yeah, no, I, you know. Because you were in a long-term I, I, relationship. I, I, yeah, I was in, yeah. You yeah, ended up like, time. I actually thought you were married at one point. <laughs> because oh, no. like all of a sudden it's like, I we had never met and mm. yes, we were like, we were, 
it, we, well, after that conversation on Instagram, there mm. was like no more communication. Mm -hmm. Like I literally mm. looked back. So it was like September 2015. Mm. And then it went all the way until like this year when I mm. reached out and reconnected with right, you. Right, right. Yeah, there was no. no communication, but you were popping up on my popular feed. <laughs> and I'm like, who's this new girl? And wait a minute, they're expecting a baby. Yeah. And they do these pranks and like all <laughs> this stuff. So yeah. and fill it's me in. It's crazy. Um within that time I had always been in a relationship after that I got in a relationship. I got in a believe like like two relationships within that time. But um wow. yeah, nah, it's uh and which I which I mean I learned a lot from it, but I shouldn't have. I like I always put myself in positions. Do you where, feel like you need to be in a relationship all the time? No, now I don't. But okay. back then back I did. Then you did. And and I really shouldn't have been, hence why I kinda like was I was out there being a being a hoe. You know what I'm saying? Even when I should have been faithful, I was being a, a hoe because I realized that I shouldn't have see so okay, so can can I talk about how Please. Uh, okay. So yeah. so yeah, so Teddy's when, like, when I'm I, ready. I'm yeah, yeah. for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so I say this, like, and I'm not like this no more because I, I want people to I don't want people to but I would say like you and learn almost, from your mistakes. I learned from my mistakes. Yeah. And, and, and I think this is why a, a lot of dudes be thinking like this too, but don't don't really be saying it. But I cheated on, on damn near. So I had three relationships in my whole entire life. I ain't going to lie. I cheated on every single one of them. Crazy. I, yeah, I know. I just felt like a pit of my stomach <laughs> yeah. as you were saying no, that. No, it, it is. It is. It is. Yeah. But one, one I, I, was, I, was, I was hella young. And I felt like I was ready for a relationship, but I really wasn't. And, and the reason why I say that is because coming from where I come from, uh, back in my block, I come, I'm from L.A. and stuff. We would grow up and everybody on my block would be, uh, uh, as, as a youngin, we would, you know, on Friday nights, we would get dressed, go to South Bay Galleria. We had a thing out there called the bridge and we would pick up girls. This was the competition for us. You know what I'm saying? Like. What girl can I get this time? What well, uh, it's a competition. So we always trying to conquer and mm, stuff like that. Sorry, he, he tries to be an emotional uh, support animal. Nah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, it's all good, Teddy. But <laughs> but um, yeah, I would always try to conquer women and stuff like all all my dudes. All it my, was all like my a notch on your belt type thing. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so what I feel like what happened is when now when I find this girl that I truly like, I, I'll be like, oh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be faithful to this girl. I ain't gonna do. It. I found the one. Yeah. But in reality, so you I always had shown. that good intention. Yeah, I I I have good intention. Yeah. Like it's it's good intention, but in reality, I didn't train myself not knowing to always be conquering and never be satisfied with what I got. So I was always on the hunt. You know what I'm saying? Especially when things got bad, like it'll be cool. I'll be being being good and all that. And then when things got hard and stuff, then that's the time why I, I'm like, man, get this. Well, like, like the man, first to... argument would it be like that? Would be like it. Uh no nah, no nah, it, it's gonna take more than that you know what I'm saying it's just be hey, over time you, you know that he doesn't get masculine you. energy very much so <laughs> <laughs> a guy gets around he wants to, like yeah. rough house sorry but uh, nah nah um but yeah I mean I would just uh at, 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 as soon as like things starting to get hard I'm like man this this ain't gonna work out did I make a mistake I'm second guessing myself and then you get in a, in a position to where you might be at your job. You know, a lot of times we had our jobs more than we had. So it's like you, everybody know that, you know, I, I hate to say it, but you'd be like, man, I got this work wife. I got this home wife. Everyone says <laughs> you know that. I do not relate because I've never, I've never right. had it. I've right. just never been that kind of person. Yeah. But like, there's a reason why it's so frequently said. Yeah, yeah. So no. you had a work wife. Yeah, mm. basically, you know what I'm saying? Is that uh -huh. who you cheated on her with? Uh, yeah, yeah. Was <laughs> yeah. it just like her that you cheated on her with or was there others? Um, it, no, no, it was. Ooh, was that question a little too deep? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was, it, it was at that, at that time yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. It was just like the work wife mm -hmm. and then over time, you know what I'm saying? When so I'm you weren't like, officially married, but it's almost like you had a mistress. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And, um. Did they and, know about each other? No, nah, absolutely. Not. Neither you know one of them. They were completely in the dark. Neither one of them. Neither one of them knew, knew about each other. And um, that's hard to do in today's day and age with all the social media. It is, but 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. That's how I would like. Like. So I ain't gonna lie. Like I would. I would be like. Say I had this this work wife. I would be like maybe flirting with other girls on some social media. Just being a complete dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, Which surprises me honestly because when we first met, like you weren't saying like dogish things. Right. So you have like a suave way to you about. Well, like, about I mean, you. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I, it, it, me, it's funny because me and my barber always talk about this. When you first meet a woman and stuff, you know the right things to say. Like, yeah. Like we know, we know what we're trying to do. Yeah. You know, we know we Calculated. know how to play the game. You know right. what I'm saying? We're gonna say the things that you really want to hear. We know that, and I know. Judging off of you, like I know you don't want no no regular dude that's just like, like I said, I felt like you was gonna marry a, a rich man, so you got to come at you a certain type Here of way. Here we are, you eight years later, and yeah. you know, ain't no rock, <laughs> ain't no rock. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it's hard, it's hard out there now, but but uh, yeah, nah, it's it's. I feel like um, I was just just out there just acting a, a complete fool you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying and um now i learned so how did you get how did you get found out and and what happened from there like mm. did you feel remorse right away or <laughs> yeah no i, I would it's crazy because i will always like i remember the first time i did it i feel bad i feel bad and i'm like man i ain't never gonna do that again like this this like this this ain't me you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying i ain't never gonna do this thing. i'm never gonna put myself in that position you know, mm -hmm. I can relate to that when it comes to like potato chips, right? Because I feel bad. <laughs> yeah. I'll eat a whole bag of chips that guilt. in one sitting and I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm never going to do this again. <laughs> and then I go and I get the next bag of hot uh -huh. Cheetos and then I do it oh, again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so it's 100%. like that with cheating. Yeah. It's like that. And then and then you get to, uh, and then you get to, uh, uh, what's it called? Then you get to, to, to it again and you, you be like, I'm in this position again. You're talking to, you at work. You talking to her again, you ain't got in your head like, oh, I ain't about to do this. I ain't about to do this. And then. All right, I need some more details though. So you got found out <laughs> by the real wife, wife, mm -hmm. the one that you were like serious with. And yeah. then the work wife, did you like tell her, oh, I got found out? Or did mm -hmm. you just cut it off like cold well, turkey? Well, it, it, for me, it was like, it was like, see, that's the thing. When, when, when you're doing it, you think it's going to be cool, but somebody like even though your even though maybe your work wife or something know about the situation they they like cool with it nah they not because somebody about to find somebody about to like get attached yeah and like you know what i'm saying and then when they get attached that's when it go wrong and then my so but in my long story short my my work wife ended up telling mom Oh, you know it was everything. one of those. So oh, that's yeah. how she found out. Yep. Went okay. All up on the Instagram, oh. telling everything. Oh, <laughs> you know what so I mean? that was not a fun day coming home. Oh, absolutely not. Because you guys were living together. Yeah, yeah, we were living together. I was already at home. Mm. Yeah, I was already at home, and then uh, yeah, that message came, and I was like, oh. and obviously you can't like quit your job, so like you have to still be going to work. It's crazy because how is trust restored? It's crazy because I did quit my I, I had quit my job right before she did that. Oh and wow! And that's what got her mad. I think she felt like, oh like, wow, oh, like, you just really gonna leave? Girls like, can be spiteful. Yeah, mm. and then she did that, and it was like, uh, oh man. I'm, so you I'm didn't sorry. continue to see her after that because you weren't working right. there. Right. Uh, but then maybe you did have some moments of weakness where you did still see her after that. Yep. Okay. One hundred percent. And and I and, you see, and I have I, to like pull it out of you, right? <laughs> this is this is this is I how mean, it is with men. They, they know it, they learn from their mistake, but it's still hard to talk I about. I mean, huh? I mean, I was I was hot at that time. I was I was like, nah, like I ain't never talking to you again. Like you gonna really do me like that? I, I, I kind of like trusted you, and that was the, the number one mistake. I trusted. And um and then you're gonna do this, but you know, I can't like everything that's done in the dark is always gonna come to light. It always and that's what I learned. And that's why I feel like I wouldn't cheat now. Yeah. Like, you know, I just okay, you wanna you wanna be doing all that? Stay single. But like you what it saying? what's the difference now versus then? Because you've told yourself that before, right? Like you said, yeah. I, I I've done this before. I learned my lesson. I'm not going to do it again. But then you did it again. So, like, what do you think is different now? Like, how has temptation changed for you? Why are you more disciplined? Um, What's changed? Because I, I realized how much hurt it cost that other person, mm. and that other person is is still dealing with that. Even though they they moved on, they in another relationship and stuff like that. 
that pain, you know, lasts forever. And I don't like to be the, the person for that. You know right. what I'm saying? So right. I'd rather just, just, hey, I ain't going to get no relationship. This is what, this is what I'm doing right now. And then, you know, we can go from there. And plus I learned that most girls, if you honest with them, like they, you know, like it's better to be honest than to, to than just to be out there. You honest. can't ever be called a fuck boy if mm. you just keep it real. Yeah. Like if you're just like, hey, this is the way it is. Mm. I don't want anything serious. Yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to have fun. I mean, I mean, then the woman gets to decide whether or not she wants to get involved. Now that doesn't mean she's not gonna get hurt. Mm-hmm. You play with fire, you're gonna get burned. I try yeah. to tell my girls this all the time. We are not built like men. Mm-hmm, right. We are built differently. Exactly. That's what I learned. We are built as the receivers, mm-hmm. and the men give us things. Mm-hmm. And and we women are emotional, and there is something called a soul tie. I firmly believe in this, mm-hmm. and you can't undo that mm-hmm. that feeling. Mm-hmm. Like you know, the world has really made it. They've glorified women stepping into owning their sexuality, mm-hmm. and being kind of masculine in that way and like oh girl you know don't have any shame like go get yours go have your fun Mm -hmm. do your thing Mm -hmm. and ultimately they end up paying for it Mm -hmm. in the end because it's hard to sleep knowing that you have a body count i'm sorry i said what i said (laughs) because those are soul ties that when you do meet the man that you're supposed to marry, the love of your life, mm-hmm. and then you want to sit there and have something meaningful with him, mm-hmm. now you're having to deal with all of this skeletons in your closet, all of these wounds, all of these unhealed mm-hmm. um, bruises and scars of, of opening yourself up to right. somebody who never deserved you. Right, right. And, and, and it's crazy. Because, so so let me ask you. I know I know that you, you, you want to ask me some questions. Yeah, but let yeah. me ask you. So, and I've always <laughs> no, pondered about this. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> I've always pondered about yeah. this. I want you to give me your yeah, honest truth. So, say that that side girl, that work wife, is doing, has, well, let me see how I'm going to put this because I know people are going to be watching. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, say, say that work wife is like really about you. Now, yeah. now I know that's kind of hard to believe because it's like, if she doing this with you, like, you think she's going to be fake. But say she really about you and she's doing more than the, than a real girl and yeah. she really showing that she care about you is it oh like not when you break up with that real girl yeah I, and i'm not just saying this for me because i know some of i know exactly where you're going with this and i got an answer for you is it is it okay for that 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 now that me and that main are done me to be with this one yeah that's a great question um and the the honest truth and i'm probably gonna get some backlash yeah, for this yeah. too is mm-hmm. like real love is real love Mm -hmm. and you can't control it you can't determine when it comes and Mm -hmm. you can't decide how it happens Mm -hmm. like i don't believe in infidelity i think it's wrong i think that you shouldn't step out on someone when you're when you're committed to them and if you're gonna choose to do so then you need to end that relationship first Mm -hmm. allow yourself the time to heal before you move on but we're human at the end of the day and we all make mistakes and you know we're not perfect Mm -hmm. and so A perfect example of this situation is actually my gram and my poppy. So it's my great uncle Mm -hmm. and my great aunt, which I think I've told you this Mm -hmm. before, but like I moved out here to be with them. Mm -hmm. Um, They're the ones that have lived in San Diego my whole life. And my great uncle is like a grandfather to me. Mm -hmm. Well, he was married Mm -hmm. and he had three children with his first wife and they were the cutest little family and they lived in New Jersey and, um, long story but like pop was like a mob kid not in the mafia just affiliated (laughs) and he uh moved here to the west coast because it's the only other place that we had family in the states outside of italy Mm. and he moved to um orange county to be with my aunt Faye in anaheim and um when he moved out here they eventually like migrated to san diego and they bought like the house that I was first living in when I moved here. Mm. It might have been another house. Anyway, mindless details. His neighbor had kids Mm. and he ended up having an affair with the neighbor. Mm. And now that's my gram. And they were married the longer than I've been alive. So it was the second wife. um, That was his true soulmate. Okay. My aunt Nancy was his first wife. He had his children with her, but 
it wasn't a forever love. Mm -hmm. Like Graham was his forever love. She was the one that was there when, I mean, I want to say when he took his last breath, I was actually the one holding his hand when he took his last breath. Um, She loved him so deeply and dearly that she just could not be there Mm -hmm. to see him die. Um, But the love that they had was something that I aspire to have. Mm -hmm. And the story behind their love was infidelity. Mm -hmm. So it's wild that you asked me that, but I think because of that situation, I do believe that it's a relationship that can work. And Mm -hmm. again, like scars is what makes us stronger. Like it doesn't have to be a perfect story. It just has to be your perfect love. Right, right. No, I've I've always pondered on that. Like, cause I'll be asking my boys and stuff like, you think, because let's just be real like if she treating you but why wouldn't you go with the person that's treating you better than the person that's treat not treating you as good like Mm -hmm. just because i was with you don't you know but i but then i I question myself because it's like okay well because i you know i'm a big um, believer in god and stuff like is god going to make this relationship successful out of this this infidelity you know i think that with god he again doesn't expect perfectionism he just expects for you to be loyal to him and to uh repent Mm -hmm. and ask for forgiveness and if god can forgive then like who are we to to decide not to you know and god doesn't judge i mean he saved the woman who was being scorned for being a prostitute you know even that word still that's that word that (laughs) prostitute that word is hard for me you guys know from the girlfriend part three it's very Uh, hard to say that word but you know it's just it's the reality like god does not he doesn't judge um and he accepts everyone Mm -hmm. so we're all his children and so i guess my question to you is do you miss work wife um do you are you still in contact with her yeah yeah i'm I'm in contact with her okay Um, why are you guys not together um because i mean she she got some issues too you know what i'm saying i'll be like hey man like you i thought you but y'all ass confused me you know what i'm saying you ain't you ain't for me <laughs> but uh but then again i'll be I, I always find myself like you know going back and stuff like that so sometimes i just be like man i need to stop playing and stop doing what i do but 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 I mean, I think communication is everything, right? Like no one's going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. But if we constantly subscribe to, oh, you didn't do this right or you didn't do that right or you ain't for me because of this or Mm -hmm. that, then how is a relationship ever going to grow from that? You know, like I think a lot of times and I don't know you that well, but Mm -hmm. just even (laughs) in this conversation, I can see it's difficult for you to to communicate Mm -hmm. some of the things that you're feeling or you've been through. It's like almost has to be like pulled out of you. So Mm -hmm. unless you're with somebody who knows how to pull those things out of you and get that communication from you, it probably is difficult to really build a like sustain, what is it? Sustaining relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, So like, how do you feel like your communication is with her? Uh, I feel like it's terrible, honestly, to be honest with you. Like we just, do you believe in couples counseling? Uh, I probably would never go with her to be honest. Why? To be honest, because sometimes I just be like, yeah, I I go back into what I be thinking like, man, God ain't finna bless this out of infant. That, that's why we having all these issues. Like we ain't meant to be. You You're not a cat. <laughs> Come here. But yeah, I be thinking like we ain't meant to be. And then also I haven't put myself like I don't go out and stuff. I haven't met, I don't meet a lot of people and stuff like that. I just like, be kind of like on some low key stuff, but I be feeling like I do need to go out. And she be feeling like that too. Like, you know, like, uh, let's go out and meet some other people to see what's actually out there instead of me just trying to force it with you because, you know, I don't know. Like, So you so went much. from making this content that was all like happy, family oriented, <laughs> like, prankster yeah. kind of stuff mm-hmm. and you were pretty successful on youtube with that and then all of a sudden you shifted mm-hmm. and you shifted to doing this content where it was really just a relationship and like talking between you and god right mm-hmm. and you went viral mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. when i first met you 
<laughs> you were working at Jersey Mike's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Nothing wrong with Jersey Mike's hey, other than the fact sure, that it's a hey. big-ass Italian subplot <laughs> is the closest thing you can get <laughs> in, on, the, on the West Coast hey, to the real sure, thing I from the East that Coast. Job too. That job did me. But, hey. so, so not knocking it. You know, everybody hey. got to make, uh -huh. make their money, make their bread. But uh -huh. you, you went from that to, like, literally, I mean, you're up to, what, 259,000 followers on Instagram, multi-million mm. views. I think you have almost a million followers on TikTok, mm -hmm. even mil more millions of views on TikTok. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> like people are loving the conversations right. between mm. you and God. Mm -hmm. Hey, and Teddy mm -hmm. is too. Come yeah. here. You're just stealing the show, mister. <laughs> He's stealing the show. So um, is that the reason behind the change in your content? Mm -hmm. Did you? 100%. So 100%. like you are showing through your actions, your remorse, like that, all those conversations you're having between you and God, like that's coming from this untold place, this story of infidelity. A hundred percent. That too. And then sometimes, so when I, I remember when I first started doing it, um, you know, cause I, I, I felt I always wanted to be a creator, you know what I'm saying? So we was doing a YouTube thing. Once that ended, I was like, okay, I, I, I still want to be a creator. I just don't know what I'm going to do yet. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So then I found, I stumbled onto, I stumbled onto the motivational thing. And then I would get messages like, oh, that really helped me and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe if I just like be more vulnerable with it, like it can, it can reach uh, more people. And then, so a lot of people be thinking from my content, like, I'm like, like if I'm talking, like if I do a piece where I'm talking to God, like I'm always sad type stuff. In reality, I take it from like, this person may be feeling like that. Like this other person may be feeling like that. Let me try to put on, on camera what this person might be going through. Like that, and I, I really do that on, on YouTube right now. I'm um, like, I try to look at it from other people's standpoint to try to make them feel like, hey, I feel it too. You know what I'm saying? I feel I'm going through the same thing with you. But yeah, I did. That's what started it, like the whole infidelity thing and um, just feeling like, like, oh, man, I'm not good enough. I, I, for the longest, I felt like since I made this big mistake and stuff like that, like, dang, I ain't never going to be able to recover. My audience, I didn't want my audience on YouTube to find out. I was dead and like, oh, man, I'm going to lose all the subscribers, you know what I'm saying, on like. The, the little couples stuff but um so basically what you're telling me right now is you're so good at acting that the next girl that comes around you can get her to believe anything no, uh, I'm, just kidding. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure they're gonna see right <laughs> you know so bad. It's so bad. but sure i mean hey you like in, in, this, in this dating game you kind of got to be an actor like like that's why that's why i like don't be jumping into no relationships like quick yeah. because like everybody putting on their best foot for first you know yep. what i'm saying and then yep. next thing you know you know a year later you like man you you ain't nothing like who i thought you were that's right. how i felt about no nah, i ain't gonna say that yeah <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah that's how i felt no, about a couple it. people you know nah, nah, I mean, <laughs> that's how i felt about a couple people from my past like hey man you i really like now that i'm not dealing with you i really see how you truly are you yeah. know what i'm saying and i'm glad that Man, i'm not in that no preach. more yeah so when i first reached out to you again in 2024 mm -hmm. that was it was either december of 2023 or mm -hmm. early january 2024 because mm -hmm. i had just launched a youtube channel mm -hmm. and i was trying to get advice from you about you know growing on social media because i was like wow like look mm -hmm. at all all everything you've done yeah. Um, I love the content that you're putting out because mm -hmm. it's all centered on God and your mm -hmm. relationship with him, talking to him. And you, I asked you, I said, hey, can I get your honest feedback? Right. I said, because I'm about to release this episode and it's the episode about my ex-boyfriend, my recent ex-boyfriend. <laughs> and I said, um, I'm worried. Like, mm -hmm. I'm worried. Like, am I being too honest? Am I being too vulnerable? Am I saying things I shouldn't say? Like, I want a man's perspective and because you've been in this industry doing this kind of mm -hmm. content, like what are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. And you gave me some really great feedback. Do you remember what you told me? Um, I don't remember specifically, but I remember the conversation. But what did I say? Yeah, <laughs> like you told me you were like, you're a great storyteller. Oh yeah, yeah, I do remember saying that. And yeah. I it was probably the last thing I ever would have anticipated hearing from you, mm -hmm. but you were like, as a man, 
Mm. I listened from start to finish and mm. I was captivated the yeah. whole time on 100%. the story. 100%. And you were, and then you also told me like about your story with infidelity. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you were like, you know, listening to this made me reflect back on myself and mm. made me feel like there's some truths that like I still need to tell. Mm, yep. And like here we are four months later mm, yeah. and you're on my podcast telling your truth that's and like crazy. telling your story. And yeah. it's honestly just a beautiful thing because that's exactly why I started doing this mm -hmm. was because I felt like I was silenced for so long and I felt like I couldn't step into my truth and I couldn't tell my story. I was afraid of fear mm -hmm. or I, I was afraid of judgment, fear mm -hmm. of judgment. Um, which you had said earlier, you mm -hmm. were like, you know, like, oh man, I'm going to lose all my subscribers. Mm -hmm. They're going to know the truth. Mm -hmm. Like it's this shame mm -hmm. behind right. your truth. Right. And I had shame on a few things. Mm -hmm. I had shame on being raised as a foster child. Mm -hmm. I had shame on being 250 pounds mm -hmm. and losing that weight and the way that I did it. Mm -hmm. Um, I had shame on failed relationships. Um, yeah. just so many different things. And Every single episode, I step into my truth more and I tell my story more and I feel so liberated yeah, after nah, I do it. No, nah, it's good. And so I guess I want to ask you, how do you feel? <laughs> uh, I feel like, like far as what? Like, like for the first time ever coming yeah, on, I like now uh, your fans are going to, are going to listen to this episode uh, yeah. and they're going to find out now that the content yeah, yeah. you put out there uh -huh. was first stem from right. the fact that you felt remorse for infidelity. Right. No, I, I feel good because you know what I, I realized, man, like, um, I'm a, I'm a big, like, I look at movies and stuff and I, I look at the behind the scenes and stuff, but I realized in movies, everything has a, um, a dilemma, you know what I'm saying? And people, it, 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 life will be boring without these dilemmas and stuff. And actually, when we feel like nobody is going to, like, people are going to shame us and stuff. It's a lot of other people that's dealing with the same thing. You that's know what I'm right. saying? And people can relate to that. That's and right. that it to me that it feels better doing that. Like cause it's authentic. You know what I'm that saying? That is the whole reason why I said I show my scars so you know that you can heal. Mm -hmm. And I think it's I, I commend you so much mm -hmm. to be able to step into this truth and mm -hmm. tell people I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. You know, I hurt someone that I that I love, that I cared about. Mm -hmm. This is now a scar on my past. This is a scar on on me, mm -hmm. but I've learned from it. I've grown from it and I know that there's other people that are struggling with it too, and I want you to know you're not alone mm -hmm. and there's actually strength into owning your truth and learning from your mistakes. Mm -hmm. Like I think you're probably so much more of a good man now mm -hmm. for the mistakes that you've made mm -hmm. just like my poppy was yeah, you know like 100%. my poppy made the mistake like uh -huh. he had three kids and he uh -huh. cheated on his wife and his whole family loves and admires and adores and respects him i mean mm -hmm. he's passed now mm -hmm. but that man was surrounded by so much love right. the day that he passed uh -huh. i mean they gave us the biggest hospital room that the hospital had <laughs> really? because all of his grandkids and great grandkids and great niece like we're there was we were like 30 deep yeah, yeah, yeah. and the italians we we rolled deep yeah, you yeah, know yeah, yeah. but he he it, it was evident the day he passed how much love and respect he had mm -hmm. and he wasn't remembered because he cheated on his wife right. and he for mm -hmm. infidelity mm -hmm. he is remembered for being a good family man a provider a protector the this man would literally take the shirt off his back and i feel like it's those moments in our in our life and in, in our experience that really shape us as humans mm -hmm. um, and show us to, show the humanity in right, us. Right. We're not perfect. We're not, right. And Instagram has made people to believe that mm -hmm. you have to be perfect. On that highlight reels and stuff. And that's, right. That's why I that's why I kind of went about it the way that I do because I, you know I'm not just about the highlight reels and stuff. There's a lot of pain in life. You know what I'm saying? And uh, people can relate to that. People can so, relate. And that's know. why so much of your content has gone viral mm -hmm. because people are reusing your audio. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and I, I, like, I I see it all the time. I'm like, that's <laughs> yeah, Jonathan's voice. Yeah, that's not yeah. Jonathan's face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, nah, no. Nah, it's, it's crazy. I, I remember when I first started seeing people use the sound, I was like, oh, like, everybody would be sending it to me on Instagram. I remember when Shade Room, that was the biggest. Yeah. I remember when Shade Room reposted it, I was like, 
Oh, you I woke famous. up. I was like, yeah. Oh, I was like, okay, this can be something, like you know. And that gives me uh, inspiration to keep going and stuff. But but I would say the main thing you know, why I be doing it is because I never forget. I, I got a message from one um, girl, and she was like, yo, like, and I never be thinking like, oh man, a real can't do that. Like a real can't inspire somebody like this. Like it's just a real. But I remember she said like, like yo, I was about to. I was about to be out of here today. Like, like I was about well, to, I don't want to say the heavy. word, but yeah, I was about to be out of that's here today heavy. and I fell on your reel and Oof. it just like saved me. And I was like, man, dang, like, you know, I had a little talk with her and, um, and, and it just, it just motivates me to keep on doing it. You that's know what I'm saying? Because if she said that to me, I wonder how many people that didn't say anything to me that are feeling that same type of way. You know yeah, saying? and I wish more people just listen to the calling they have over their life mm -hmm. and they, they trust it because I talk about that in my first episode, but, you know, I felt like I had this calling on my life mm -hmm. since, what, I think it was like 2016, 2017, mm -hmm. and I fought it over and over and over again because I was afraid. Mm -hmm. And now that I've done this, like, I haven't had something as powerful as what you shared just now, but like so many people have reached out and been like, wow, like I'm going through the same thing or I can't wait for this episode to drop because I feel like I have no one to talk to about it. Nobody gets it. And like, you are the one person that I feel like will get it and mm -hmm. I can get advice from. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that is the reason why we do what we do right, exactly. is to let people know like you're not alone. Like this doesn't get talked about enough mm -hmm. and there needs to be more authenticity mm -hmm. and vulnerability in the world. So oh, that's why I'm like, it's so funny <laughs> like how things come full circle because mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. 2015 on Tinder <laughs> to you sitting in my couch, in my, yeah, in my living room on my couch crazy. today, meeting for the first time <laughs> and like, us having yeah. the connection we have like uh -huh. it's it's wild to yeah. see like god how how god works in mysterious ways mm -hmm. so yeah that, that, and that's crazy that this came from tinder uh you know what I'm saying when i was on tinder ain't nothing tinder good. sponsor us <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you know what i'm saying i was out there trying to do everything Jesus on tinder plus. i was trying to be a i was trying to be a hoe on tinder i was doing all that stuff but and you it's know. funny, you know, you can have your own agenda, but then uh, <laughs> somebody who is pretty, you know, set in their ways, yeah. always known, soul ties are real. You wasn't yeah. getting very far <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, I took some L's, but. Uh, it's yeah, all good. You know. Yeah. So what's the plans for the future? I mean, I know that you have like a new YouTube channel, mm -hmm. right? Right, right. And yeah. you're, um, you, you have that specific kind of video form that you've been putting out there mm -hmm. of content on Instagram mm -hmm. and TikTok. But you, I think you said you're gonna be transitioning to some more longer form yeah, videos, but, right? Yeah, uh -huh. Tell me a little bit more about that. Um, Just, uh, you know, right now, like, so like, if you go on my Instagram right now, I haven't posted in, in, in a minute, you know what I'm saying? Just because I'm trying to uh, focus on the YouTube thing. For me, YouTube is a lot harder than Instagram and TikTok. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to focus on that, trying to build my community with that. And um, that's really just my main goal, really, you know, starting all over. And, 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 and it, it messes with my mind because, like, I had it with, with, with my baby mama. You know, I was up there, you know. And yeah. then I just had to start all over. I deleted that channel, man. I was like, man, because she was getting all the followers anyway. I was like, man, I ain't, your ass ain't about to get nothing from you no more. I'm deleting this. Mm. And then, and then y'all was on some bitter stuff. But, yeah, uh, yeah I, I deleted that, and then I started all over. And um, Have you worked through that forgiveness? Yeah, yeah, nah, like, like, and, and then me and her is cool. Like, we got, like, she still, like, be saying her little jokes and, like, being kind of, like, bitter towards me sometimes, but... I'd love to see her out. come on your new podcast, make her your guest cameo. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Maybe I will have that mm. You know what I'm saying? Like... You're welcome. <laughs> That I don't, one will I don't go even know. Viral for sure. She probably won't even agree to it. She probably be like, "Nah, you ain't about to make me look like a fool out there." You know what I'm saying? Some people, you know, but yeah, it's gonna be cool. Like, yeah. I, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm doing that right now and just focusing on that. I'm about to go back on the Instagram, start doing that because I got a couple of ideas. I kind of want to change up the content a little bit, but. Um, yeah, I'm just focusing on YouTube, grinding on YouTube. That's it's exciting. Fun. It's I fun. actually just put out a real like a day or two ago uh -huh. um, where I said like, there's no quota on reinventing yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very admirable for someone to start from the ground, mm -hmm. like the bottom mm -hmm. and like work them way themselves up to the top. I've done it countless times. Yeah. 
Um, I think it builds character. Mm -hmm. I think it builds confidence. And if you've done it once, you can do it a million times. That's my thing. Um, So I'm really proud of you. Appreciate it. Um, it. And I'm really (laughs) excited for the long form content to see what's going to come from that. Hopefully I can also make a guest guest appearance on yours (laughs) at some point. Mm -hmm. But um, tell the listeners where they can find you and they can connect with you. Um, You can find me on Instagram at jbriscoe33. Um, TikTok is Matcha Poppy with two eyes. Matcha Poppy with two eyes. Matcha Poppy. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't even know. I don't even know how I got that. Now, I think my boy was like, "Hey, Matcha Poppy," because I was always drinking matcha. But um, okay. Matcha Poppy, and then on my uh, on my YouTube, it was it's, it's just Jonathan Briscoe. You know my name, so that's okay. where you can find me. Very nice. Yeah. Exciting. Well, yeah. thank you so much for being my first yeah. ever guest. Thank you for having me. This has been great. the most awesome experience. Yeah, most definitely. Sorry for the little love <laughs> nah, from Teddy. Teddy is dope. But <laughs> yeah. that's a wrap. Thanks, guys. See you on the next episode. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of love and sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> Sit. <laughs>